Do you want to add more awesome functions and features to GIMP? Why not try and install the free gimmick plugin and add hundreds of quick and easy to use filters. Gimmick is awesome, free and a powerful plugin for GIMP software. Ok let's go ahead and open up the web browser. In Google search I'm going to type in GMIC. G -M -I -C. If we do a search for that gimmick we will see that there's this website here gimmick.eu. I'll put a link to the same website in the YouTube description. So let's go ahead and click this download button. You can read more about this software here on this page, but it has hundreds of different features or enhancements that you can add to your GIMP software application. It's a very powerful tool. So we'll have a little experiment and play around with this just to make sure it's working correctly. Let's go ahead and click the download button first. And it will take us over to this page here. Now you can make donations. So if you've got a little bit of change, please do help support this project by making a small donation. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Windows installer. Now there is options to install on Linux and options to install on Mac as well. But I'm using Windows. I'm going to click on the XE installer stable version here. Let's go ahead and click on that. It will take us through to this website, but it should automatically start downloading the software. So you can see it's downloaded here. I'm just going to move this to one side of the screen. I'm going to open up this folder on my desktop and we'll go ahead and drag and drop this pic this software into here. So I'm going to close down the web browser. We don't need that anymore. And we're just going to double click on this file to start the installation. So the first thing it's asking me is the language settings. So I'm going to go ahead and select English. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to accept the terms and click Next. Click Next again. And then click Install. So it's a quick install. We'll go ahead and click Finish. And we'll launch GIMP to see if this is working correctly. OK, let's go ahead and open up GIMP software. And before we do that, I've got this folder on my desktop. I've downloaded a few images from Unsplash. I'll put links to those in the YouTube description so you can download them as well. And we'll open up the GIMP software and we'll just give it a quick test, uh, this gimmick plugin, right? So let's go to this folder. Let's drag this picture into GIMP and we'll convert it. And we can see the image in here. Let's go into right click on it and duplicate. So I want two copies. I'm going to leave the bottom one as the original and we'll manipulate this top one. So let's click on the top layer. We can go to filters and then we can go to this new option gimmick here. So when we click that, it's going to load up the software. It's still within, you can consider it still within GIMP software itself, but it's an extra plugin where you can go and manipulate. Now there's literally hundreds of options. It will take me many hours to go through all of these different options. So it's for you to really go down uh, through these different options and experiment with them. So you can click on things like artistic and you can click on this option and then it will give you these different options in here to manipulate the image. So you can see that it's manipulating it here and you can change the settings um, and just play around with it. And if you don't like what you see, you can always go and experiment with a different option, right? But if you wanted to make some sort of background for something, maybe this is a quick way for you to go and do that, something a bit different. You can just go and click on all these different options in this drop down, and you'll get different settings depending on which option you click on. Now, some of them take a bit of time to load, but this is like some sort of paint dab effect. Right, so this is quite a creative effect as well. You can minimize this drop down and go to the next one. So one that I use quite often is the frames. And if you click frames blur, you get this nice frame, right? So this is maybe good for Instagram or some sort of social media post where you want to have like the background blurred out a bit, a bit, but just have the frame built out for you very, very quickly. So as long as your image is sized correctly, then you can just go ahead and use that on um, uh, your social media you can click polaroid then you get like a little polaroid image this is quite nice as well you can also select many images and, and convert them into polaroid as well you can use that same effect by selecting many layers in the stack and then uh, using the polaroid effect uh, i believe you can do that and there's lots of other different options in here for you to go and experiment with right these different frames and this is just touching just a fraction of what is in here there's so many different options in here there's experimental stuff as well there's like testing so this is all like testing stuff that they may be experimenting with um, may not work correctly but you can even go and click on them and you can just see what they look like and just see how they affect the actual image itself so let's dreamy watercolor right so you've got this dreamy watercolor so let's use this one we need to go and click the apply button down here apply 
So when, you, when you've selected the, diff, the specific option that you want, go ahead and click this apply button. You've got to be a little bit patient, right? It can take maybe a few seconds, um, can take a little bit longer sometimes to go and apply all of these different filters. So all of these different options now down this side here, it's applying it to the actual um, image. So just be a little bit patient. Uh, it can take a few seconds. Sometimes it can take up to a minute. Uh, it really depends on the size of your image and the type of effect that you're applying. But you can see there's a little timer down here just giving you an indication of how long it's taking to uh, process that. So we're going to be patient um, and let this software finish its update. And once it's finished, Gimmick should close down automatically and you should see your updated image inside of the Gimp software. So let's let that finish. Okay, so the gimmick plugin is finished manipulating the image. I'm gonna go ahead and click this OK button. Took about two and a half minutes, so it wasn't quick. Took a bit of time to apply that effect to this particular image, but this image is quite high resolution. So you can see that it's done a lot of detailed uh, manipulation here on the actual image itself. So you can go ahead and um, simply hide the top layer. You can see the original image underneath. This is why I created two copies. So you can see the manipulated version and then the um, original version underneath. Now you can go and experiment. I would suggest you have two layers here, one with the original image and one with your manipulated image. And that can be a nice way to see what effect has been applied. Before continuing this tutorial, it will be awesome if you can hit that like button. You can also support my channel by simply subscribing and hitting the bell icon. Many thanks. Let's do one more. Let's right click. We're going to go ahead and duplicate again. So we've got our original image below and the one that we're going to manipulate on top. We'll go back to filters and we'll go back to the gimmick plugin. And this time I'm going to try and use the, uh, the frame one that I normally use, right? So we'll go to frames. We'll go to, uh, I think it's cube. It's not cube. Maybe it's blur. Yeah, this one here, blur, right? And we'll go ahead and click apply. And it should apply this effect pretty quick. The last one took, you know, at least two and a half minutes to apply it. But this one should be a lot quicker. It's done already, right? Because it's quite a simple manipulation. Let's click OK. And now we can see that image inside uh, GIMP software as well. You can hold down the control key, remember, and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And use your middle mouse button to pan the canvas. So here's our other image. Here's our new image. And here's our original one. OK, let's go ahead and minimize this. We'll close down this folder. Okay, so that's the end of this video tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel where you can find over 750 free video tutorials on a wide range of software applications. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.